today I'm going to talk to you about my labor and delivery and hopefully Ryder will sit through it. If not, then we'll be taking some breaks, but she just woke up from a nap, so she's just a little cranky, but ugh, we're going to try and get her to go back to sleep because I think she's still sleepy. But anyway, I went into labor on April 6th and I delivered Ryder on April 7th and my labor lasted for 26 hours. It was the worst pain I've ever, 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 ever felt in my life, but it was so worth it because I got a beautiful baby. So I went into labor at my mother's house and I was bouncing on an exercise ball, which I recommend to anybody who's pregnant because it's so comfortable. And um, I was in denial for about the first four hours that I was even in labor because I just was so nervous and so freaked out that I'm like, I can't believe this is actually happening now. So my mom kept telling me, you're in labor because my contractions are about five minutes apart. And my grandmother kept saying, shy, you're in labor. And I just kept saying, you guys leave me alone. Like, I'm not listening to anyone here. Like, don't even tell me that right now. I don't want to hear it. So... You know, I'm bouncing on the ball, and my mom has an app on her phone, and she's, like, counting the minutes between the contractions, and I recommend getting one of those apps to anyone who is pregnant. Um, it helps a lot with my labor. So, I'm just bouncing around and just trying to, like, bounce through the pain, and then right now, my pain level is probably at, like, a four. It wasn't bad, but it was definitely, like, okay, I feel it, but it wasn't, like, you know, everyone says when you're in labor, you're going to know you're in labor. And in my head, I'm like, this isn't that bad, so I don't think I'm in labor. You're just really holding on to this hair right here. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have that back? Thank you. Appreciate that. So, around, this started at around 7 o'clock. At around 12 o'clock, you know, the pain was increasing. The contractions were getting closer. I'm still like at my mom's house and she's just watching me like I couldn't even leave the room without her following me behind me. She was so nervous and so freaked out. So around 1 a.m. she's like, look, you're in labor, we're going to the hospital. And everything in me did not want to be one of those people who go to the hospital way before they're in labor. I just didn't want to do it. I wanted to labor at home as long as I could because I knew that, it... where are you going? As long as I was... At home, they, I couldn't get an epidural, and I really wanted to have Ryder with that one. My mom had my sister and I with that one. In my head, that I just wanted to do the same thing. So, hello. You're still awake. Okay. So, we go to Cedars, which is probably 25 minutes from my mom's house. We go in. I'm definitely in pain. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. You okay? Okay, okay, here you go. <laughs> I'm definitely in pain, and I walk in, and I'm like, can I get checked? They check my cervix, and they say, you're only two centimeters, and your contractions are too far apart. You need to go home, and I'm looking at my mom like, look, lady, I told you. We drive home, and, well, we drive to my house, sorry. We drive to my house, and it's probably like 30 minutes away, and literally, as soon as I walk into my room, which we're in right now, I just lose it like everything in me gives out my body just goes nuts and I'm like oh my gosh I'm definitely in labor right now and it was like I could literally feel my body opening up and I was just pacing around the house and I was trying not to scream and I had a um, meditation CD that I was listening to and I was trying to like focus in on are you gonna sneeze again? Oh, oh, bless you. Another one? No? You want your bath again? Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you okay? Now you got me coughing. So, I'm pacing around and I'm trying not to scream, but it just wouldn't work. Like, I'm screaming. I'm losing it. My mom is like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to deal with you anymore. Like, I turned into the exorcist. Like, it was just so painful. Like, I just never knew, like, I could feel so much pain. And 
in so much anticipation and like being anxious and just wanting something to happen but then not have it at the same time because I knew that it was going to be painful and we called my dad who lives in Pasadena to come out to LA because you know I wanted him here of course and um my mom called him and he probably came at around 4 a.m and at this point I'm you know the contractions were coming it was probably like three minutes apart and the pain was just so nuts and I just I just don't know how I could have even prepared myself for this and I probably could have done a better job preparing for it and I regretted it at that time that I didn't take like a meditation class or anything but you know it was what it was at that point and I was just pacing and trying to control it and I was here for a really long time at one point I got into the shower I put a chair in my shower and I just sat there and I let the water hit on my back my mom, of course, sat in the bathroom with me. She would not let me out of her sight. And my parents and my sister, they just rotated and took turns with breathing exercises with me. And then the next person, you were, okay. The next person would take a nap. And you know, I'm not sure how anyone slept through all my screaming, but they sure did. So at one point, you know, this went on for hours. And at one point, I just really felt like I need to go to the bathroom. Like, and I went to the bathroom, and I sat down, and I look, and I'm just bleeding everywhere. And I just start freaking out because I'm like, oh, my God, I labored at home for way too long. The baby's going to come out of the toilet. Like, I just, everything in me was like, oh, no, no, she's coming now. Like, we need, we need to go right now. So I run out, I tell my mom, and she's like, okay, I'm done with you. Like, we're not laboring at home anymore. We're going to the hospital. Because, of course, you know that the hospital is driving. Now I'm thinking I'm going to have the baby in the car. So we drive to the hospital. That was the worst car ride of my entire life. It was so painful. Anything, I felt everything. Every bump, I felt it all. Like, the turns, it was just, it was just nuts. So... We get to the hospital, and at this point, I'm like, look at the front desk, like, you know, I'm in labor, I don't care, you're not checking anything, you're going to admit me, like, we're going to sit down and have a baby. So, we walk in, of course, they're like, we have to, you know, check you and see what's going on, but at this point, they can clearly see I'm in tons of pain. So, they admit me to the hospital, and now I'm laying on my back, and I just, I think that was, like even more painful than just standing up and trying to walk out the pain and you know I'm laying there and they're like we have to put an IV in you I asked for an epidural or I screamed you know for an epidural and they said you know you have to have fluids in you to get one and I'm like all right pump it like do what you need to do so ladies like we have to put an IV in you now getting the IV for some reason was one of the worst parts of that's my finger not a pacifier was one of the worst parts of my labor it just she just missed my vein completely and it was just like she's playing tug of war with my arm it was just a lot but at that time you could have done anything to me and i wouldn't have cared as long as i knew that a pain relief was coming right it what is going on <laughs> so she put the IV in me finally, I'm sitting there, then the next doctor comes in and says, it's going to be a wait for your epidural because there's about four to five people ahead of you. Ow! Now, it, this is like the real, realness of having an infant or having a baby. So, at this point, I'm like, four to five people, like, I need an epidural now, I don't know who's ahead of me, I'm looking at my dad, like, figure something out. He doesn't even want me to get an epidural because he's under the assumption that the epidural will go to the baby's bloodstream. I've explained to him and now the doctor has explained to him that at this point he's done with me about to break his fingers off out of pain. And he's like, okay, let's get this epidural. Now, at Cedars, you can only have one person in the room. Oh, okay, okay. You better? Going like this way? Okay, okay. It's okay. You're okay.
Okay. So at Cedars, you can only have one person in the room while you're getting an epidural. So I asked my dad to stay because I felt like my mom probably would have freaked out when she saw the needle. I was secretly freaking out. For some reason, I read so many things about getting epidurals. And I was just imagining this to be like the most painful experience ever. And actually for me, and you know, everyone is different, it was nothing. Like compared to everything that I've gone through in the last like 16 hours, it was literally nothing. So the guy's just gonna feel like a little bite on your back and then you're gonna feel pressure. And I was like mentally preparing myself to feel like the worst pain ever. Like in my head, this long needle's about to go through my spine. Like it's about to be nuts. I felt a little prick and then exactly we said some pressure and my dad I'm like bracing and I'm holding on to him and his eyes are just wide open and asking all the questions of the world and the doctor's just trying to make sure like I'm okay and at this point I'm like wait you're done like that was it it was like the easiest process ever I didn't it was not painful at all and I was just so excited to know that, you know, in about 20 minutes, I will actually be able to breathe. Like, I felt like the whole time I was having contractions, I couldn't breathe, which is why I was screaming. And I know that probably doesn't make sense, but it was how I felt. And this is my story. So, I got the epidural. My family was allowed back in the room. At this point, there's my mom, my sister, my aunt, and my stepdad. And now I'm an angel, I'm apologizing to everyone, I'm telling everyone how I'm sorry I cussed them out, I kicked you out the room, I'm so sorry, I, my aunt was laughing at me, talking to me, I basically turned into the exorcist, like she said it was so bad, but I'm like, look, leave me alone. So, you know, hours go by, I'm able to sleep, I'm able to rest, I can't eat anything, but they gave me like some ice cream and some, you know, ice chips, and at this point, it was just like they would come in and check and make sure I was dilating correctly, that I wasn't in pain, and it was beautiful. Like the process was just so good. So hours go by, hours, 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 and finally my doctor comes in and she says, "Okay, like um, the baby's pretty low. It's time to push." Now at this point, it was like everything, every emotion just came up, and I just was like oh my god no no hold on wait I need a minute like and I just started thinking in my head about like everything that I had gone through and it was just really emotional and it was just scary and it was such a new and like beautiful experience of course I'm gonna cry and I was so excited and I'm in a room of people who love me and who I know would love Ryder and at this point, everything that I'd gone through up until it, it was just nothing mattered. And my whole pregnancy, you know, there were so many questions around it because it wasn't planned. And I'm not, I don't think that that's a bad thing to say, you know, it wasn't. But once I found out I was pregnant, it was so embraced and it was so supported that it didn't matter. And... You know the doctors were you know doing what they're doing and I'm watching my mom's face and I'm watching my dad and my sister and they're just looking at me like you know it's time so I really have to bear down and get her out because I was so nervous that I would be too narrow and that I would have to get a c-section and I really wanted to have her and I'm like okay like I have to do this and I have to prepare myself and it has to get done like she has to come out so the doctor comes in and you know she's all ready and they have the little newborn station already and I'm like okay we do like some practice pushes I'm an emotional wreck if you don't know that we do some practice pushes and I'm like wow this is about to be exhausting and it was it was it was that it was exhausting but it's like one of those things where you really want something so bad but you know it's so hard to get but you have to keep going so of course she asked me do I want to do skin to skin where you know once the baby's out they immediately put her on your her him on your chest and that's basically like the first skin they feel and it's great for bonding so I said yes and they asked me if I was gonna breastfeed I said yes and 
they're like, all right. So she told me that when she puts on her, you know, her official outfit, she's of course into rabbits, but when she puts on her other outfit, like that means the baby's basically here and the head is out and that, you know, it's time. I pushed for about an hour and my dad had one leg, my mom was in my ear, my sister and my aunt were down at the bottom. And, you know, my mom's just encouraging me. My dad was just, I think he was just as nervous as I was. And he was asking the doctor a million questions. What's that? What does that do? Where's that going? I'm like, Dad, if you don't just pay attention to what we're trying to do here and stop asking all these questions. So about an hour went by, like I said. And then the doctor put an oxygen mask on me. And I looked at the screen and I could just remember, like, my vitals were doing something weird. And riders were doing something weird. And I look at my mom's face and she's just... She, the doctor asked her if she needed oxygen. She just looked just as, you know, crazy as I'm looking probably. And the doctor just placed the mask on my face. She didn't actually put it on. My mom put her hand on top of the mask. My doctor's like, look, you don't have to do that. It's going to get to her. My mom's like, I'm putting my hand right there. You're not telling me anything. And I could just tell that I'm losing energy. And I can see everyone's faces in the room. And they're looking at me like, you know, they can, I can just sense that something's not right. And my dad just looks at me, he's like, look, you need to do this. And my mom is like, you need to do this. And I don't know, something just went off in my head that I had to get her out. We pushed, we pushed, I pushed some more. And I saw her put on her outfit. I'm like, oh, thank God. And my dad is like, I can see her head. I can see her head. She's coming. And and they were like, you just have to give us two more, just two more. And I just gave them everything I had. And they said, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I just look and they take off like the top of your gown and they put, they put it on my chest. And my mom just starts crying and I'm just crying, of course. And I look at my dad and he's just in shock. And we're all just crying and Ryder just was so beautiful. and. She looked so healthy, and I was so proud of myself in that moment. And I was so proud of her, and I was so proud of my family that we we did it. And I say we because I genuinely feel like we did it. Like, you know, my best friends are all blowing up my sister's phone, waiting to hear about the arrival, and everyone's FaceTiming. And I could just feel so much love and support, and that's what I needed. That's what I still need. Being a single parent is... It wasn't my plan, but I'm embracing it the best I can, and I'm living it out daily the best I can, and, you know, throughout all the negativity that I got for it, and all the positivity I got for it, this is our situation, and this is, you know, me and Ryder's story, and I just can't wait to share it with her and with everyone else, because it's I was so excited to have her, and she was out, and she was just so beautiful, and she didn't cry immediately, so I'm looking around like, uh, can somebody make the baby cry? My dad's like, calm down, the baby's gonna cry, the baby's gonna cry. And then finally she just lets out this cry, and I just, I just get like this huge sense of relief, like, okay, we're done, like, uh, give me my baby. Everyone leave me alone, like, and it was just, it was just so beautiful, and I'm so proud. And... I'm going to include a really, really small clip from my labor at the end where you can basically see me break down and cry when the, she first comes out and my mother cry. And, you know, hopefully you see, like, all the emotions and the love that was there. And hopefully you enjoyed our video about my labor and delivery. And you watch all our other videos about my pregnancy. And you like and you subscribe and you give us a thumbs up. And, yeah, stay tuned for our next one. And hopefully... Writer won't be a little cranky and will be awake for it. So, thanks for watching. Yeah, let's get some of that more glue out of here.